you have this opportunity to be a doctor that's going to make a big difference for people in the world, people who need you. Are you going to let them down? Too many pre-meds focus on how many pubs they need or what the best clinical experience is. They're playing the wrong game and they're thinking too small. Today, multiple deans from the best schools in the country will tell you the four keys of what they are actually looking for. And spoiler, adcoms are looking for try hard. Key number one, you are the best option. Each of you has a community that needs you and you have something to offer them. So I need you to succeed. There are people in your life, in your community, that you are the best doctor on the world for. And that's because you know them. You know their grocery stores, you know their family, you know what they struggle with and what they care most about. And if I found a 4.0 GPA, 528 MCAT pre-med from Virginia, someone who hasn't ever gotten a multiple choice question wrong in their life, they still wouldn't be a better doctor for your community. And don't take it from me. And you know how I know that? First of all, not only am I the Dean of Admissions at the largest MD school in California, the admissions deans meet twice a year to discuss topics that are important to all of us. And one of those topics is the need to make sure that people who are taking care of the patients in California that need them are representative of the people themselves. And when it comes to this, pre-med culture sucks. It's so try hard to put on for your community. Don't be a gunner, get some good grades and just do a little bit of scribing. F that. This is bigger than that. We need you to be your best self so you can serve the people that matter to you most. And if you look at real successful pre-meds, you'll notice that they are specific to one community like Southern California or one population like patients with physical disability. You can only appreciate that by reading through multiple successful pre-meds who got into the best medical schools in the country. Our application database features eight full applications, including the one that got me into UCLA. Over 11,400 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below. Key number two, just a doctor. Here are three deans of admission, and I want you to tell me what they have in common. And it's not that obvious team activities, sports activities, somebody who went off and did something like, you know, had kids who get off, went off and did AmeriCorps. We had one kid that like picked up whatever the heck they were doing and moved to Greece when they were having like that big influx from the Middle East and, and worked at a camp for like six months. You know, I had a kid who was a mountain ranger. We had an Olympic athlete. I mean, there's so many different things that are wow factors. Okay, well, there was a million and one different examples there. People who are certified nursing assistants, I love it. Like that's hard work and it shows grit and it shows that they're really dedicated to taking care of patients. Well, that feels like the opposite. That was a highly specific example. You know, I was a waitress at Applebee's for uh, many years and I'm an emergency physician now and you would not, there are so many similarities in the two jobs, so. And now I, that just felt kind of completely random. So what is the same about how these three deans find a standout pre-med? It's not the activity itself. That actually is a red herring. It's not that there was a standout pre-med who used to be a firefighter and so becoming a firefighter is a guaranteed medical school acceptance. It's that most firefighters have certain values. They work in teams with high stakes situations. Take a look again at the example of working at Applebee's and working in the ER. You know, simple thing like being a waitress or a waiter, right? Like you think, oh, that's not really medically related. And I'm like, well, no, you're dealing with you're dealing with customers and 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 who, you know, that's how you deal with the patient. You have to listen, you have to deliver, you have to know what they need. It's not the activity. It's what you learn in the activity. It's the leadership experiences you develop. It's the maturity you build. That's what matters. You will not be just a doctor. You bring your identity as a basketball team player, an Applebee's waiter, a brother of a sibling who has autism. And the lessons you take away from those lived experiences make you a better doctor. And if someone thinks it's try hard or irrelevant to bring those identities to your pre-med application, they are just wrong. And it's this maturity, it's this intentionality and comfort with yourself that separates pre-meds who become doctors from those who do not. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you want to showcase the best version of yourself. 
Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their application on time have a 92% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. And our results are because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into the best medical schools in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we're full. Key number three, you will annoy people. When you start making decisions that are true to yourself, they won't make sense to other pre-meds. In fact, I will guarantee that you will annoy other people. When I decided that I wanted to become an intramural basketball referee, some upperclassmen scoffed and said that's useless or said that I was trying too hard to stand out and it looked corny. There are many prerequisites to getting into medical school, but here is one that is not required. You don't have to love pre-meds to become a doctor. But the majority of pre-meds are frankly insufferable. Well, 60% of pre-meds never make it into medical school. So basically the people that you'll be hanging around with may be nothing like the people you know as you prepare to take the MCAT and get into medical school. Part of the price of impact and being true to yourself is that other pre-meds will find you to be a gunner and annoying. F other people who bring you down. That says way more about them than it does about you. You're not doing it for them. So are you doing it for ad comms? Just do what excites you. Don't do what you think you want us to hear. Do what excites you and then it will shine. Uh, and, uh, and you'll follow those passions and then you're gonna be happy. You're gonna be happy in medicine because it's what you love. Honestly, no, you're not doing it for ad comms either but they do like it more than those other pre-meds who find you annoying. You're doing it for the sideline of friends and family who will root for you no matter what. And so remember, you can't be the best version of yourself without also being a complete joke to other people. Now, if you are applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you don't want to look like a complete joke to ad comms. If you feel lost or confused about your medical school chances and think that having a guide and a mentor would be helpful, it would be an honor to support your pre-med dream. We only take four students per month until we're full. Book a free strategy call in the description box down below now before we can't take on any more students. Key number four, you tell me. You've been successful thus far because you are great at following instructions. You aced the Gen Chem problem set. You followed the template for the high school five paragraph essay. Medical school admissions though is different and there aren't any prescribed steps. There are things that matter, yes, but you dictate how you get there. Do you have any vision of where you want to go to, whether it's urban or suburban or rural or like, I don't care if it's primary care. I don't care if it's neurosurgery. The correct answer, however, is that it is obviously at least reasonably well thought out um, and, and that you have a reason for saying whatever it is that you say. You are the hero of your own story. You tell me the impact that you want to make and prove it through the impact you've had through your lived experiences. Above all else, it just has to make sense. I was a girl who did um, uh, a camp for kids with autism uh, and they teach them how to ride horses and because it helps their motor skills. But the reason she did that and the reason she put that in there is that she had a sibling with autism because her sibling inspired her. And so that was consistent with her story. This is the beauty of medical school admissions. It filters for excellence, authenticity, character, and grit. And it's so cool that there are so many ways to show that. And when you find your thing in your vehicle, it should make no sense to all the other pre-meds. I refereed intramural basketball. I coached youth basketball. Today, I still record my basketball games to watch back and learn from. On my days off, I call my best friend to review the footage and see what I can do better. And if you think that's crazy or try hard or corny, that makes sense. But this is what fills my cup. And your application and your life should be a pure representation of you. And again, if that's being a try hard or cringe or being a gunner or corny, that's totally fine because we don't live our lives for their opinions. Pre-med culture brings out the worst in people. And this is my attempt at rebranding trying hard as something cool. We love it. The people who love you want the best version of you and ad comms love it too. If you appreciate cold, hard lessons, then you'll want to hear the 10 hard truths I wish I knew when I started my pre-med journey. That video is here. Thanks, see you soon.